Hello, David here, and welcome to my devlog, where I overview the progress of my dream game project. On the previous devlog, I did a little introduction about myself and my motivations behind this project, as well as some information about the game I'm planning to make. If you missed that episode, you can check it out on the link somewhere on the screen or down below on the description. In today's devlog, I would like to go over all the development work I've been doing for the past weeks. But before I jump into it, as this is the first time I go over technical details, let me know in the comment section if you would like a more detailed approach and uh, explain a little bit how I implement the features or if you would prefer a short and overall view of all the systems. As I said on my previous devlog, my go-to choice for this project was going to be Unreal Engine 5, given the fact that I have uh, quite a bit of experience in the past and also that it gives a lot of features out of the box. So I decided to start the project by tackling one of the biggest problems Unreal Engine has with 2D projects, which is the tilemap editor. Although it has the basics to work with tiles and sprites, the editor feels quite clunky and it's missing a lot of quality of life features. So I started doing some research to find alternatives for this editor and I found one that is quite good, which is called Tiled, that is great for creating tilemaps. It has many great features, but the ones that I like the most are the custom properties. It's basically a system that lets you write any kind of data into a tile map, tile set, tile layer, or even into individual tiles. The potential application of this feature is massive, and it will help us create things such as different terrains, which could be like water or lava. In brief, this software is great, and on top of that, it's free. I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you want to check it out. And if you really like the software, please consider supporting the developer. I forgot to mention that Unreal already supports importing these tile maps into the game by just drag and dropping, which is simply amazing. However, while I was playing with it, I noticed a pretty big flow. When I changed the tile map in the tile editor and tried to re-import it into Unreal, it was not allowing me to. I had to do it from scratch. If I were to use Tile as my main tile map editor, I would definitely need to re-import the map every now and then. So one thing led to another, and after not finding any kind of workarounds, I decided to make my own Unreal Engine plugin to take care of this. It took me way longer than I thought, as I haven't done a plugin before. But I learned a lot in the process, and I was very happy with the results. I ended up making a plugin that works on the background while you have the Unreal editor open which basically detects any changes that you made from the tile editor and automatically imports it. On top of that, I extended the paper 2D classes to include the custom properties that you can set from tile, making this a very complete plugin. Um, because it was all made in a plugin format, I say what the hell not and added it into the Unreal Engine marketplace so other people can use it instead of wasting precious time setting everything up. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. While I was playing along with the plugin, I noticed that there was something else missing in Unreal, which was animated tiles. Something that is pretty basic in any 2D game, and makes the map more lively and not so stiff and static. And after some research, I couldn't find any workarounds or solutions that Paper 2D included that was integrated within the tile map. So I tried the very next thing, which was using flipbooks. For those of you who don't know, Flipbooks are basically a way of implementing animated sprites in Unreal. I was planning to place those flipbooks on top of the tiles that were animated within the tile map. And it would have worked for basic top-down views. However, on isometric views, the thing gets way more complicated, especially because of the Z order. So at the end, I had to choose between two possible solutions. The first one was setting every single tile in the tile map as individual sprites and replacing the ones that were animated with flipbooks. And the second solution would be to completely re-implement how the tile maps are being rendered within Paper 2D. The first option was obviously the easiest, and I did not want to touch the second option not even with a stick. But guess which option I ended up with? You are right, I ended up having to re-implement the whole tile map rendering. To be frank, I firstly tried to setting every single tile as a sprite, and then I took it to extreme and setting a very big map and tested the performance, and unfortunately it was very bad. 
so I decided to write the rendering of the tile maps and trigger a re-render every time a tile wants to step to the next frame of the animation. I was quite happy with the result and it looked quite more performant than the previous option. And at the end, because I implemented both options, I could go back if any trouble arises. Now that I have the basics for creating maps and importing them into Unreal, I decided to jump to another topic, which was moving around the tile map using a basic cursor. As my game will be turn-based, a grid movement system would be the way to go. And because my map is already made out of tiles, converting them into grid should be a piece of cake, right? I couldn't be more wrong. If my map were not to be isometric, or if it were, but it didn't use elevation, then yeah, it would be pretty easy, but oh boy. Combining isometric view with elevation made everything much more complicated. I kid you not, I spent a whole week trying to figure this thing out, just trying to navigate using basic movements up, down, left, right. And every time I found the perfect algorithm, I made my map a little bit more complex and tried more complicated movements and everything just broke and I had to start all over again. I was able to make an algorithm that was around 90% perfect, which isn't pretty bad. However, I couldn't rely on an algorithm that ended up having bad movements, specifically when a player does weird angles or something like that. It had to be 100% perfect or nothing. So after days of trying and pulling my hair out, I decided to take a step back and try a different approach. In game dev, we have a system called NavMesh or Navigation Mesh, which is basically a very thin layer that goes on top of a surface of a map and basically pre-calculates all the possible paths that can happen within that area. Unfortunately, Unreal Engine's implementation of nav meshes are meant to be used on 3D environments. And although I could have hacked it to make it work on 2D maps, still it wouldn't have worked on isometric maps. But then I thought, what if I manually paint the nav mesh on the tile map by using special tiles that would be within a layer that would be hidden? So I gave it a try. And with a very basic algorithm, I was able to navigate through the tile map flawlessly, regardless of elevation or jumps between the layers. I am very happy with the results. Although this would require extra steps when drawing the map, it will ensure that the navigation works perfectly fine without any kind of glitches, assuming that I don't make mistakes while I draw the maps. And this is pretty much what I have been doing since the past devlog. I kind of feel like I'm taking baby steps here, but I know the basis of the project need to be very solid in order to develop new features on top of it and not have surprises later on. Anyways, this is all I have for now. I hope you find this develop interesting. And as always, any feedback is appreciated. Or if you have any questions, don't forget to post it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.